So there's actually two different ways you can work with Python. One is as a file that's saved and you run this file. And that's the most common way, especially for a large project. If you had several thousand lines of code, it's really the only manageable way to do it. But there is a second way, and while it's not used in big projects, it is often used when you're learning Python, and that is called interactive mode. Interactive mode is exactly as it sounds. You get to interact directly with the Python language, typing command and seeing response. Let's take a look at some examples of using interactive mode real quickly so we can see how to start to learn to use Python. Now to do so, we need to go to our command console. There's a couple ways you can do this instead of Windows. If you're on Windows 10, there might be a command app and you can click in the search bar CMD and find that app. If you're on a previous version of Windows, the easiest way is actually to hit the Windows key and R. This is going to bring up the run window. Inside of it, you can already see that I have typed in CMD before. It remembers your previous commands. And CMD will bring up a command console window. Click OK. And this is going to take you to some place like users and then the username you're logged in as. This will be different depending upon what machine you're on and what version of Windows you're on. That part doesn't matter. If you have Python already installed, you should be able to type in PY and Python will launch for you. Now, as you can see, if you look at our screen here, we have Python 3.7.3 installed. That's fine. The version is not overly important for what we're going to be doing. To show a type of interactive mode, you can simply type in a command. For example, print, quote, hello world. If you click the enter key or return if you're on a Mac, you'll see hello world. Now that seems like it's something pretty simple, but it's actually done several things that you need to be aware of. First of which is we used a function that's built into Python, print. Print is a command which will export out information to our screen. And so print becomes a very easy way for us to deliver information to the end user. This command works whether you're in interactive mode or you're running it from a file. The second thing that we see here is in cyber quotes, we have what's known as a literal string. A literal string is a collection of characters. It can be letters, numbers, or even symbols. But what we print is what is inside of those quotes. And you can see that from our screenshot. Now, Python has several different ways of using literal strings. This can be a little confusing, but it's also very powerful in ways that lets you do things. For example, while I used double quotes in my first example, I could have also used a single quote. Notice it provides the exact same results. Why is this important? Well, very simply, sometimes you need to include a single quote or a double quote inside of your information that you're printing out. Let's take a look at an example where you might run into this. Here I've typed print hello, I'm Walter. By using the single quote in the contraction I'm, because we use double quotes, we can see the single quote. Because I use double quotes, I was able to use a single quote in my contraction, hello, I'm Walter. Now, let's see what would happen if I had chosen to use single quotes instead. When I hit the enter key, I now get an error. See, what happened here in this error is when I had a single quote to start my string, it looks for a next single quote to end. It looks for what they call a matched pair and it just sees the first one available. It doesn't know that it's supposed to be the end one that's supposed to be our matching. Computer isn't smart enough to figure that out. That's why we often will use the double quotes when we have a single quote or single quotes if, for example, when you have a double quote inside of there. That's not the only way to do it. We can also use escape characters and we can use even what they call a triple quote, which is using the same either single or double quote three times 
and I'll provide us another way. But this is just a quick reason why you might see it and something you'll see very common inside of the Python language. But there's more to the interactive mode. Let's take a look at one of the things that we can do, for example. I'm going to set a variable called x. Now all I did was say x equals 98. And believe it or not, that's actually pretty impressive. Because this is what's going on inside of it. The computer sees I've defined a variable x. It knows it's a variable because there's no quotes around it. So it can't be a literal string. It's just a variable name. Variable names have to start with a letter or an underscore. And they can be composed of lowercase, uppercase letters, as well as numbers and underscores. But it cannot start with a number. Next, we use the equals, and we use the equals as what's known as an assignment. We're going to assign what's on the right-hand side of our equals to the variable that's on the left-hand side. So x equals 98. If I type in print x, and notice I don't put any quotes around my x, when I hit enter, it remembers the fact that I stored a value inside of my variable called x. And because I use that variable to hold that information, I can then go and retrieve it. This becomes very important when I start to have larger, more complicated programs. Sometimes there are hundreds or even thousands of lines long because I'm remembering information that I used earlier. I'm able to use it again later in my program. And I can use this as long as my program is still active. So I can keep running this for minutes, even hours, and it won't forget this value as long as I don't overwrite it. Now, I can overwrite it because it is a variable and the information stored within it may vary. So let's take an example of that real quick. Now I've specified that x equals 7. If I type in print x, when I hit the enter key, I get 7 as a result. Why? Because I overwrote the old value. It's like taking the old value, removing it, and putting a new value in its place. And that's how variables work. Variables can store strings, they can store numbers, they can store custom data. We're going to see a lot of different uses of variables as we progress through. But this has been a real quick introduction to using a print command and variables and literal strings, all in real quick interactive mode.